Some years ago, Dusty Smith made a video answering some questions for atheists, and everybody loves questions for atheists, so I wanted to answer them too. Question one. Are you absolutely sure there is no God? I'm an igtheist. I don't understand what most people intend to mean when they talk about gods. Since that's the case, I can't be absolutely certain there is no god, because I'd have to have a clear idea of what that means before I could assess whether or not such a thing exists or not. Number two. What happens when you die? I suspect that what this question intends to discover is what I think one experiences at death. I think you just lose consciousness. I think the simplest answer is that it's like being asleep, but you don't dream. When I had my appendix removed, I remember that being under anesthetic was different from being asleep in two respects. One difference is that I lost consciousness very suddenly. I can remember everything up to the very last second I was conscious. It wasn't gradual like falling asleep. The other difference was that I didn't dream. I think that's what death is like. I don't understand any concept of the mind or consciousness that doesn't define them as activity carried out by some kind of material brain. Therefore, I can't understand what it would even mean for consciousness to continue after one's brain no longer carries out the act of being conscious. Another way theists sometimes ask this question is, where do you go when you die? I think you go to the same place a song goes when you stop playing it. It makes more sense to think of one's consciousness as an activity rather than as an entity. When you die, the activity stops. Question three. What if you're wrong and there is a heaven? Well, since I don't understand what it would mean for consciousness to continue without a brain, I don't really understand the concept of heaven. But if when we die I have some kind of experience that resembles how theists describe heaven, I will be very curious as to how it works. I would ask what is now carrying out the acts of perceiving, thinking, feeling, etc. If there's no brain doing these things, then what is? Question four. Where do you get your morality from? I get it from my conscience, and my conscience gets it from my environment and the emotional capacities of my brain. These of course are explanations of my morality, but theists who ask this question typically want justifications rather than merely explanations, and specifically they want an objective justification. They want a universally binding principle or standard. I don't think there is such a thing. Even if there is a god who tells us what to do, I don't see what objective reason obligates us to obey. Theists are often very uncomfortable with the idea that their most strongly held moral convictions are not written into the very fabric of the universe. Question five is very similar. If there's no God, can we do whatever we want? Whether there's a God or not, our actions have consequences. Whether there's a God or not, people are not going to let you hurt them with impunity. Supposedly, if there is a God, consequences will be eternal rather than finite, but even finite consequences sufficiently deter me from acting on every single impulse I might have. If what you mean by can we do anything we want is really can we do anything we want without consequence, then the answer is clearly no. Number six. If there is no God, how does your life have meaning? It's never been clear to me exactly what meaning means in this context. Does it mean consequence? A god does not have to exist in order for the things you do to have consequences. Does it mean purpose? You can apply your life to whatever purpose you want. Folks who ask this seem resistant to the idea that finite consequences count as consequences at all, and believe that a purpose you choose for yourself, rather than one which is imposed upon you, doesn't count as a real purpose. Just as they are uncomfortable with their moral convictions not being essentially cosmic, they don't like the idea that their purposes aren't also cosmic. And if there is a God, what is the meaning of our lives? We're often told that God has a plan for us, but what is the ultimate goal of that plan, and why are we obligated to value it? Sometimes theists say that God created human beings to glorify him. That's not a very exciting purpose. An eternity of obsequiousness sounds rather dull. Number seven, where did the universe come from? I don't think the universe came at all. And the theist answer to this question, typically, is that it came essentially from nowhere. If they believe in the doctrine of creation ex nihilo, they believe that God got something from nothing. I don't understand how that makes any sense. Rather, I believe that there never was nothing. There never was a time, in the 13.7 billion years that time has been passing, when nothing existed. The Big Bang was not an event at which the universe came into reality as if it entered existence from somewhere else. Rather, I think it's more a temporal edge. It's the limit to time itself and to existence itself. Number eight! What about 
about miracles? Well, if we take miracles to mean occurrences which can only happen if a god makes them happen, how exactly can we identify such events? If we see something occur which was heretofore thought to be impossible, how do theists recommend we distinguish such events which are miracles from such events which are illusions? If we can get these phenomena into a lab and do repeated experiments on them and get consistent results, we can determine that they're very unlikely to be an illusion. No miracle has ever been confirmed this way, and even if we confirm that a heretofore or believed to be impossible event is genuinely occurring, how can we be certain that we weren't simply previously mistaken to believe that such an event was impossible in the first place? The idea that space and time are malleable was considered impossible before relativity showed that it isn't. Unless we can test for the presence of a god, I don't see how an event which someone purports to be a miracle can be distinguished from some kind of misunderstanding of nature. And even if there is something supernatural going on, how do you distinguish the work of a god from the work of a powerful warlock? or something. Sometimes apologists will argue that Jesus' resurrection, if it happened, is convincing evidence that he is a God incarnate. But I don't see how that follows. Even if Jesus had the power to perform the miracles he's claimed to have performed, that doesn't mean that he is therefore an all-powerful creator of the universe. Number nine! If there's no God, how come every society has religion? First of all, this question implies an argument ad populum. It seems to assume that the best explanation for a widespread belief is that said belief is true. This is not always the case. Secondly, this implied fallacious argument seems based on an implied premise that isn't even true. Maybe every society has religion, but not every religion is theist. Therefore, not every society has theism. Not every culture is theist, and even if every culture were, that wouldn't be very convincing evidence that a god exists. And number 10, do you believe the world would really be better off without religion? I have no idea. I guess that would depend at least somewhat on which definition of religion you use. I think we call such a wide variety of practices and beliefs religious that it's impossible to imagine what the world would be like if all of them were eliminated. Whatever practices or beliefs were eliminated would almost immediately be replaced with some other practices and some other kind of meta-narrative. I don't know that secular practices and beliefs are inherently less harmful than religious ones. I can imagine several specific religious practices and beliefs that would be better off without, but I don't feel confident speaking broadly about whether religion as such is a net positive or a net negative. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.